Three, two, one. Hey, welcome back to another episode of The Rock Fantasy Files. I'm your host, Stephen Keeler. I'm the owner of the Rock Fan World Famous, I guess they say, Rock Fantasy Record and Smoke Shop and Pinball Collection here in Middletown, New York. On this episode, we're going to pay homage to the mighty Slayer, who have announced a return to live performances, select live performances later this year at festivals. I have asked my guests to choose their dream sets on tonight's episode. Hey, what do you guys, if you got to pick what the, the set list, and I, I said anywhere from 18 to 20 songs, maybe if you picked a couple more, I don't care. But uh, one of the things I talk about when Slayer broke up, they what they played their last gig, and I think November of 2019, what happened to the world after they broke up? <laughs> we went into a fucking shit storm. We had a fucking plague. We had fucking war. We had racial tensions. We had fucking you name it happen. And maybe Slayer coming back could bring it back together. But it's been a shit show since they fucking left. So, and some people were saying like, "Oh my god, they shouldn't come back." Whatever. You know what? What metal band or what rock band does a farewell tour and stays? I saw the Who in 82. I've seen the Scorpions. I did the meet and greet with them on their final tour. I did the Leonard Skinner one. And guess what? Most of all those bands are still playing. I think the only one maybe is Ozzy. And Ozzy, unfortunately, doesn't have the health to keep doing it. That's when they stop. That's when they can't do yeah, it. Yeah, but he's the one that started that. Because I was at the uh, uh, the No More Tours tour. Oh, yeah. In the following <laughs> year, I was at the Retirement Sucks tour. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, he kind of did it, but the who, I mean, this is way back in 82 and my wife and I were, I don't know, we weren't even married yet. I don't think we said, Hey, we bet we should go see the who we'll never see him again. And you know, the who played about the woods last year, not, not the same who, but now yeah, it's like dude. 20 people in the band, but anyhow, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, two originals. We're here yeah. to talk Slayer tonight. Uh, we got a good, uh, group of folks in tonight. We got James, Delise from Crucial Pain. We've got Frank Tossi from Another Demon. We got a couple thrashers. We got Ed Farsley from Armageddon Productions. We got Ovi, our nocturnal vampire from Norway. We got Robert Tuttle, the bass player in Lady Evil and Greg Woods Band. We got Tony Dio from the South. We got Count Ralphus, our local metal historian. We got Mr. Steve Levin. Long time friend and former Rock Fantasy employee. He did some traveling last week. Saw some stuff too. We'll talk about that in the end. We got we got Tracy and Tracy. I got your cup to me with me tonight. The WXAX. I'm going to have my refreshing uh, ice water from that the Rock and Roll Juggernaut radio station. So please go check that out if you haven't yet. And uh, so we're just going to start off tonight. I think I'm going to start off with James. Oh. Okay. Well, you're my first square up in the top. It's going to make it easy. So, right. so let's say you heard Slayers getting back together, and you're just like, "Hey, James, what should we play? This is how we're going to go tonight. This is your set list. You know, I I kind of said 18 songs with an encore, but if you got a little bit more, go for it. Let's hear what you have to say. All right. So I'm going to say something very controversial. Uh -oh. um, I was just listening to the album again today before doing this and picking the set list out. Actually, I've had the set list picked out for like a week, but I, I wanted to make sure I didn't want to add any more songs from this particular record. I think Rain and Blood is an over fucking rated album. Wow. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I know there's going to be comments on YouTube. Oh, it's your I know you pot. guys are going to disagree. I yep. think that's an overrated album, man. I think, to me, every time I listen to that album, since I've been a teenager when I got into them, it's always, all right, Angel of Death is a great song. Postmortem Raining Blood is great. But everything that's sandwiched in the middle there just feels like speed for the sake of speed. And they're <laughs> sacrificing songwriting technique. In it, it's just like, all right, fast, and that's it, fast. Just fucking fast. <laughs> that's all we care about. I, so, I agree this, with you 100% on all the Slayer albums. What's that? I agree with you 100% on most of the Slayer albums. That sometimes they sacrifice the melody 
just to play at 4,000 miles an hour. Their melodic yeah. stuff is amazing. And the other stuff that was just a slashing drum and the 100 mile an hour picking, it just doesn't do it for me. Yeah. I, I like when they mix it up, when they throw in the fast thrashers with the groovers and throw some melodic shit in there. That's my thing, is my favorite era of Slayer goes from South of Heaven to Divine Intervention. That's that's my pinnacle three Slayer records. Okay. Just my opinion. Just my opinion. So my set list would be heavy with Seasons in the Abyss and South of Heaven songs. So my set list, if I were to sit those guys down and go, dudes, this is what I want you to play, here it goes. Angel of Death is the opener. Black Magic. Skeletons of Society. Payback, my favorite song off God Hates Us All. I'm trying to touch almost every album a little bit. Uh, Mandatory Suicide, Born of Fire. When the Stillness Comes, I really Ooh. like the fucking Repentless album, and I really mm -hmm. dig that slow, nasty song on there. When the Stillness Comes is fucking awesome. And stay out there again. Jihad, love that tune. Mm. At Dawn They Sleep. Yep. Mm. Read Between the Lies. That is a fucking underrated Slayer song. I love every fucking second of music in that tune. Underrated Slayer track. 213. It's another underrated Slayer song. Party Hardy. Expendable Youth. Yeah. Behind the Crooked Cross. Nice. Tormentor. Now, this one's probably going to surprise people, but I've always loved this fucking cover. Richard hung himself. <laughs> wow. Off an undisputed that. attitude. Yeah. <laughs> I fucking love that song. <laughs> World Painted Blood. Probably my favorite track off that record. Mm -hmm. Seasons in the Abyss. And then you end the initial set with post-mortem slash raining blood. Okay. So that's the initial set. My encore would be South of Heaven and then War Ensemble. And that's my set. I, I kind of wanted to mix super fast ones in there and then have the groovers in there like I dig with the melodic shit. And I also wanted... I wanted to not be a complete selfish piece of shit and just play the songs I want to hear. So I had to throw in Seasons in the Abyss. I had to throw in War Ensemble. I had to throw in Angel of Death. But I'd be very, very happy with that set. Cool, cool. All right, James. I'm sure you'll pipe in as we go through this tonight, but it was uh, it was great to have you on tonight. And uh... Absolutely. I think you're Absolutely. gonna be, a, to be I think you're, I think you're gonna be a regular with us on here. Yeah, I think so. He also shakes things up because usually Obi does that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Anyhow, I'm gonna go over to Frank Tassi from another demon, another uh, local tri-state area thrash metal band. If you haven't heard from him before, check him out. Hey, what's up, guys? So uh I, like uh, James, have my own opinion, but I think it's a little different. Um, so <laughs> Slayer was my first concert that I went to by wow. myself as a kid when I was 15 at the Roseland. Uh, almost died at that show with the uh, skinheads in the mosh pit. But uh, <laughs> I think I've seen Slayer more times than, I, than any other band. And it's not because I wanted to go see them. It's because they always have killer openers. Right, <laughs> so. I think I've seen Slayer 19 times. So, wow. wow. Yeah. It's like those were the shows all my friends were going to, dude. So, from the age of uh, 15 to about 33 is all the times I saw them. So, I have like, um, I've had like a love hate relationship with them when I was younger. I appreciate them much more now, uh, and especially within the last 10 years. Um, so, my set list. Uh, it's, I don't have 18 songs down here. I did cut a lot of it out and I went over this a couple of times. So here goes. Um, I'm going to go starting with Hell Awaits, Into the Antichrist, 
Into Alter Sacrifice, which is one of my favorite Slayer songs of all time. Uh, then into Black Magic. And then into Necrophobic, which I don't even know if they could play that live anymore. To be honest with you. <laughs> I don't know if they all have the chops for that. Um, break it down into Mandatory Suicide. Then into Postmortem. One of the hardest strong songs on the right hand for those, mm -hmm. those of us that know. Um, into War Ensemble. Then breaking into Jihad with a little break right there in between so they could switch tunings. Nice. Um, <laughs> and then my favorite song by Slayer completely is Disciple. Uh, that's wow. uh, just so anthemic, especially for that time period. That's when I was coming up. Um, then from Disciple, go into Killing Fields and then almost play the same song and play Chemical Warfare afterwards. So, you know, that's uh, that's where they would break their set. And then they come back and for the encore, you know, Darkness. Seasons of the Abyss would start going to Dead Skin Mask. And then end in their uh, in their trinity, uh, playing Raining Blood into South of Heaven, and of course ending with Angel of Death. Cool, cool man. Good set. I'm with that. Disciples, your favorite Slayer song, and someone Ed said we got to get some younger people on this week, yep. and I I worked on it. Frank's a yep. little younger than <laughs> I, I'm. I'm the older statesman, of course. Of <laughs> At 42, I like being called younger. <laughs> younger than me i'm 63 yeah, my friend for real i'm I'll 43 i like hearing that there's another <laughs> youngster there yeah, yeah. more than 20 years on most of them yeah yeah <laughs> so uh maybe we'll go to one of the veterans next since he's next in line on my screen we got ed farsley from armageddon productions and another uh, demon's going to be playing one of your fests i think uh or yes. gigs this summer right yeah, the Rage of Armageddon 7 Fest on yeah. August 31st at the Brooklyn Monarch. Another demon will be opening with cool. Detente and Darkness, um, a whole slew of bands, Deceased, Blood Feast, uh, flying over uh, Detente from California. Uh, we got Wrath from California doing a 40th <laughs> anniversary set. It's going to be an amazing show. I'm um, looking forward to seeing another demon again. Great, great, great local band. Um, sure. So, Slayer, what can you say? Um, all-time classic band, one of the best. I mean, I've known them, loved them since I first heard Aggressive Perfector and then the Show No Mercy album. Um, tape traded up the ass with Slayer shows back in the early, mid-80s. Um, so I had basically all the songs of Hello H. I knew them by heart by the time the album came out on live shows and just got to see them at Lamore, got to see them at uh, Felt Forum, got to see them all over the place. All different eras, all different lineups. Always a great band. Um, personally, I'm old, so I love old Slayer. Um, <laughs> appreciate the later albums to a degree, but not really a fan. Some of the albums I don't really like at all. Um, do not listen to them unless I have to for you know for a podcast or something to that degree. But otherwise, the first albums still love them to death. Absolute masterpieces in my eyes. Um, and I agree with James. Rain of Blood is an overrated album. Great album, wow. fantastic thrash album, <laughs> but very overrated. And probably my fourth favorite Slayer album. Um, so to start off the show, um, has to be Hello Aids, the ultimate beginning, the ultimate intro, um, Hello Aids, then go into Angel of Death, um, probably my favorite Slayer song next, Haunting the Chapel, um, absolutely love that song, um, then I'm doing a little Show No Mercy block with Tormentor, The Final Command, Cryonics, and Show No Mercy, yeah, everyone get a blast of old Slayer right there, mm -hmm. um, then going into, um, War Ensemble, Dead Skin Mask, and Praise of Death, and Crypts of Eternity. Uh, as you see, kind of like pairing up some albums here. Um, then we do Altar of Sacrifice and Jesus Saves. I love those two songs together. Um, going into Captor of Sin, Aggressive Perfector, got to do Aggressive Perfector, and ending the regular set with Evil Has No Boundaries. Oh. Um, coming back, yep, coming back, uh, Encores, South of Heaven. Again, another great song with a great intro, perfect to... Uh, uh, start off the encores with and Chemical Warfare and ending it with Necrophiliac, my other favorite Slayer song. Um, to me, that's the ultimate Slayer lineup. I've seen most of those, if not every one of those songs live, probably numerous times, but still fantastic and they still sound great live, like like they did back in 1983 and 1984. Um, so, there we go. Um, great times. I'd, I'd love to see that Slayer show. Anyway, I'd fly anywhere to see that tour. <laughs> How many times have you seen Slayer? Can you count? I can't remember. No, it. Honestly, I don't. 
I've no, I, I've I mean, never really kept track of how many times I've seen. No, I mean, I've seen Slayer a lot. <laughs> at one know. time, I used to remember all the concerts I've been to. Yeah, I used to remember too, way, way, way back. But no, I have no idea. I would say fifteen to twenty, probably at least. Uh, I saw the final tour. I didn't see the final leg with Ministry, but I saw that first leg. I think four times. Oh wow! <clears throat> I didn't even go the last the last two three times they toured. I didn't even go to see them. Yeah, I saw I the PNC. The I was hanging out with Dale Caldwell Digger that does the leather. I think you guys yep. might know Digger. Yep, yep. And uh, yeah, he, he hits me up. He's like, "Yo, you want a pass to get them?" I'm like, well, "I got a ticket already." I'm like, "What's this pass do?" And I just slapped a sticker on i just go walking in the back of pnc it was it was a fun night it would be it was nice. a, a ryan from behemoth's birthday party too and it was also carrie king's birthday oh wow but that must have been a good party back we, then we had the yeah we were at the behemoth party but i had friends of mine i drove down with and they were they weren't able to come back so i didn't get to stay for the carrie king but i was hanging out with the guys from testament and nice it was a fun time but uh anyhow I saw that leg of that tour at Mohegan Sun. Oh. And man, Bohe Behemoth fucking sucked. They were terrible. Really? The sound was fucking awful. You couldn't, like, you couldn't make notes out. It just sounded huh. like a watch of bullshit. It was bad. And Emma God was terrible the night that I saw them, wow. too. Same thing. The, the sound was fucking atrocious. Mm -hmm. Testament was killer. And Anthrax was okay. They had some technical problems too, but man, who was oh, I, I wanted to who, go who, take a long shit during Behemoth set. Really? Well, Behemoth yeah. came out first, anyhow, right? Or was Behemoth first or Testament was first? Testament right? was first. That's right. Yes. Which is incredible when I, and stupid I, at the same time. When I saw them at PNC, <laughs> Gene Hoagland was playing drums for Anthrax. Oh, oh really? I saw them with Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he was filling in that night, and I was joking yeah. with him. Uh, we were standing behind the soundboard at PNC, if you guys ever been there. Like, that's kind of where the bands could watch up by the soundboard, this little area. Right. And he, I said, Gene, are you going to jump for Slayer tonight, too? He's like, I could. <laughs> he could play for anyone. <laughs> yeah. But uh, he was a fill in in case somebody else couldn't make it. But, uh, yeah, memorable times. You know what? Since I, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull uh, last week, Obi said I can go first. I'm gonna I'm gonna breeze through mine right now. Then we'll continue on. I'm gonna start off. I think a couple other people have started this the set off with Hello Waits. Yep. I'm gonna go into War Ensemble next. I'm gonna go into Born of, Born of Fire. Then we're gonna go old school a little bit with Black Magic, Fight to Death, Die by the Sword. And then we'll we'll move a little bit more modern back up and we'll do South of Heaven because I, I can't see them playing without doing that song. Then we're going to go to a Dawn They Sleep, Necrophiliac, Altered Sacrifice, Piece by Piece, Mix It Around, Get, get a Little Older Again, we're going to Chemical Warfare, Captor of Sin, God Hates Us All album, Disciple, I'm going to throw in there. It's probably the only modern thing I have on the list. I thought of putting Repentless in. I actually do like the Repentless album. And, uh, of course, I saw that tour a couple times, too. I saw it at the Capitol Theater. Forget where else. But uh, <coughs> And then I'm going to go post-mortem post -mortem into Raining Blood. Now I'm going to pull a different cover out. You talked about a cover. <laughs> I wanna, I'm want i going to have him do Dissident Aggressor. Nice. Uh, Ooh, I thought then, about that. <laughs> and then for the encore, they're going to come out with Jesus Saves and Angel of Death. So that's my list of Slayer. So I got all my homework done. I can just listen to you guys. Oh, let's go. To, let's fly. Let's get in the plane and fly over to Norway and visit Ovi. Oh. <laughs> okay. All right. So I, got, I got mine and I got Dennis. Oh, cool. Yes. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Den, Denny must be segment. coaching hockey tonight or something. Nice. Yeah. Oh, he's sick. He's sick. Yeah, sick as a dog. Yeah. Oh no, he, he was kind of saying he might not make it last week. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's where Chris Allo is. We we're going to steal Chris and have him on because he's seen Slayer more than any of us. He'd probably yes. seen him yeah. like a hundred times or more. Wow. Well, I will. I will do Dennis first then, since okay, since he can't be here, and he number one is Hello Eighth with the extended intro. Going over to Antichrist, then to Behind the Crooked Cross, 
divine intervention, die by the sword, angel of death, altar sacrifice, Jesus saves, at dawn they sleep. Sounds like a lot of people like the old stuff, huh? Mm. For example, when there is suicide, evil has no boundaries, show no mercy, season of the abyss, south of heaven, hardening the arteries, criminally insane, aggressive perfecter, post-mortem, and raining blood. That's the main thing. And core, it's uh, chemical warfare, capital of sin, or haunting the chapel. Wow. You're going, oh. heavy. You're going heavy duty in Norway. You should be, because in Norway, they're going to play the heavier stuff. Cool, <laughs> that, cool. was Dennis. that was Dennis. That was that, Dennis. Well, that was Dennis. All right, no, uh, Dennis, of course, is bringing up that. I, I, I got it mixed up. Sorry, Ovi. A little That's all good. Well, then for me, I'm going to hold, I want to insist on having Paul Bostaff on drums. Oh, you are. <laughs> oh, man. Ouch. Oh, my God. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. You hit the thumbs down for Mr. Levin, sir. That's fine by me. I like to rattle the bones in the uh, cage. <laughs> I love poor Bo Staff. <laughs> yes. He's great, but he's no Lombardo. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> They're both great. Well, I'm going to start off, of course, since I want to have Paul Bostaff. There's a reason why I'm going to start off with Killing Fields. Ooh. Yes. That was my first album that I am too. Divine Intervention was my introduction to this band. So we're going to go straight, album, you know. straight to number two, that Circle of Beliefs. <laughs> then we're going to go to Gemini from uh, Attitude. Undisputed Open. Attitude. Yeah. And then we're going to cleanse the soul. Then we're going to go straight over to temptation. Then you want to hit the seven phases. Then Arthur CD vendor. Then we're going to do a little catatonic. And a little public display of dismemberment. <laughs> huh. And then we're going to go over straight over to some fictional reality after that, because it's kind of, yeah. Then we're going to pick it down piece by piece, then you're going to praise the dead afterwards and show them no mercy and then you're going to become come back as skeletons of society and we're going to have some divine intervention that's my set list and as for Encore, i got to have Rain and Blood and Crypts of Eternity to shut it all down so I have <laughs> a little point with my whole set list, it's kind of a, kind of a story uh, very... Ooh, very eclectic we can almost uh, make two nights of sets out of these uh, lists here. That was a very uh, yeah. If they do like a cruise, they could do one. We could do it, it, one set on one night, and one the other, like seventy thousand tons. The, the OV set. The OV set, but I <laughs> I think I'm gonna get a front row seat for the Denny set. But so no offense, OV. <laughs> That's fine. I mean, you're an old fan, so. Well, yours was definitely different. You're keeping it different. We thought that James is with different, but yours is even way different. So, how about I go to Mr. Robert Tuttle next in line? How, what do you got to say, Rob? Okay, I um, I didn't put them in order. I just took the the tracks from the albums. Okay. Uh, although I do have a suggestion for the actual openers, or and you can switch them up for the, uh, the encores. Personally, I like it when a band doesn't even do an encore, and they come out and they say we're rocking from hit from start to finish, and when it's over, it's over. Okay. You know, why waiting around and put the house music back on and play with our emotions? You know, you're coming back out. Just get it over with. Um, <laughs> so what I have is opening up is either Seasons in the Abyss or Raining Blood. With the slow intro, I think you could build up like a nice little fever pitch and then, you know, start a start rocking. So nice. <laughs> after that, uh, what I would like to hear in the set, what I've done is I've picked some songs and then at the end I picked some stuff that they could throw in to add to, to fulfill it out a little more than just the, the ones we all pick. Um, so that being said, like Blood Red, Spirit in Black, Dead Skin Mask, I think should all be in there. Uh, Kill Again, Crypts of Eternity, I would like to see in there. Of course, you got to have Angel of Death, Piece by Piece, Postmortem, right? Uh, Tormentor, The Antichrist, Evil Has No Boundaries. South of Heaven, of course, has to be in there. I also picked the dissident aggressor. I thought that was pretty good. Okay. And that would be like the main body. And then going into the the later albums, which people don't seem to really take a liking to, some people do, but hey, hey, hey. Um, the whole album, <laughs> not necessarily, <laughs> right? So I figured off of those, um, 
you could throw in Divine Intervention, SS3, or 213. Those would be great in the middle of the old classic stuff, breaking it up from, from new to old. Uh, Gemini, Bitter Peace, and State of Mind would all, like, you could put in behind, Dissident Aggressor, all those other things, and they would be, like, like uh, you know, like a great little addition to the uh, to the, the the older pieces that everybody wants to hear, but you can't just play all the old pieces. I thought they would be great in there. New Faith, uh, Seven Faces, Here Comes the Pain, uh, Eyes of the Insane, all would fit right in there. And I don't have to play all those. Just take the ones that the band feels best and add to the set list. And I think that would be something I would like to go see. Hmm. Cool, cool. Well, right. We're getting some different set lists for the guys. Uh, we're going to head down to North Carolina and see Tony Dio. How's Reaper doing? Reaper is doing just fine. He's done, <laughs> he's done with the showbiz and he's, everything. He's right done now. with showbiz for a while. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, he, I, see, he, I see he, pictures he, of him just slacking. He's just relaxing now. <laughs> he's no. chilling. So Slayer. So um, you know, long history with them for sure. Uh, I my the first Slayer record I ever got was Rain and Blood, and I remember reading in magazines and the hype on it. And I went out and bought the cassette, and I put it in and listened to it riding around, and it was over like what is it 20 some minutes long or something and i flipped and just it, turned the flip the tape over the side too and it starts playing again i'm like wait a yeah. minute yeah that's the whole album and it's on both sides yeah. you know but yeah but i like it, it ripped off <laughs> and, uh, my, my first slayer concert was um the clash of the titans tour with anthrax and megadeth that was like in 91 i believe maybe 92 i can't remember Mm -hmm. um but that was the first time i ever saw him and i think i've seen slayer on just about every tour since then um when they've come around and i've actually had a chance to work for him a couple of times i worked as a runner for him two different shows one was oz fest and one was uh, on the god hates god hates us all tour and uh but cool guys and you see them they, they, they'll talk to you they're real personable and i went to the last tour the last mm -hmm. one of the last shows on the last tour and got to hang a little bit afterwards and with Carrie and stuff. And that was really cool. But, um, but yeah, for this, um, I'm going to go, um, mine's pretty much old school. Uh, I'm going to just cut it off at seasons for this. Um, I'm going to kick off with hell awaits cause it's the greatest opener, uh, going mm -hmm. into postmortem into black magic, captor of sin, dead skin mask behind the crooked cross, mm -hmm. Chemical Warfare, Tormentor, which I, I love Tormentor. Have they ever played that live? I've, I've never heard a live recording of that. <laughs> um, Aggressive Perfector, another great one. Live Undead, uh, Ghost of War, Seasons in the Abyss, Die by the Sword, Born of Fire, uh, Necrophobic, um, and Angel of Death. And then come back for an encore and do War Ensemble and Rain and Blood. So that would be my picks. So um, I was going to tell a quick story about the strangest Slayer show I ever saw. Okay. Was, um, so. I had worked for them at Ozfest, and the day after they were going to be at House of Blues in Myrtle Beach. Now I worked for them in Raleigh. Next day they're going to be at House of Blues in Myrtle Beach. Uh -huh. And uh, if any of you guys have ever been there, this is a place where you go downstairs. It's like you have to go up and down stairs to get in and out of the place. Well, anyhow, hate breeds playing with them. And then there's like a couple of local openers. One of them, I can't yeah. remember. One, one of the bands was just horrible. It's just a horrible rap metal band. They made us sit through and then hate breed plays. Hate breed did a great show. And about an hour goes by. And I saw where we were standing. I saw him covering the soundboard up. Oh, and oh, I looked at my buddy and said, we need to get the hell out of here because they're not going to play. He goes, what do you mean? I said, they're not going to play, man. Something's going on. They've covered the soundboard up. And of course, they wouldn't let you have beer bottles or cans at that show. It was all solo cups, plastic cups. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they came out and they said that Tom Araya had kidney stones and was on his way to the emergency room. Oh, boy. And cups just start flying. People <laughs> boo it. They're trying to hightail out of there. And they've got cops outside, like in riot gear, waiting. Oh, they, they've canceled the Slayer show 
and they made them sit through a shitty rap metal band and they're pissed, you know? <laughs> so yeah, it was pretty crazy. But uh, they said that was, I think that was the first show they had ever canceled. But wow. you know, he could have the, the screams would have been a little more blood curling with the with the kidney stone, you know, don't you think? <laughs> and that was uh, yeah. you said, so that was an off day. That was an off date of Ozfest. Yeah, it was a uh, off date. So, so he had so Ozfest. he probably had to be back on the Ozfest tour within the probably next the day. Next or day. So. Yeah, because I I remember that summer vividly because. We had tickets to the Aggressive Music Fest up in Glens Falls Civic Center, which was run by Teddy Etall. And Steve knows Teddy. Uh, what's that? Upstate Music. Uh, or Black and Blue or what? I, I think that was the name. Of it. I'm sounding a little senile here, but. That's, it's Black and Blue. Black and Blue was. Up, and he, oh, he was helping with the Upstate Music Hall. That's where I got the Upstate. Mm -hmm. But uh, had something to do with that in Northern. That was in Clifton Park. But anyhow, later on, Saratoga Winters before that, he was involved with. But uh, that was aggressive music fest. And what he did, he he did it for a couple of years in a row. <laughs> he he pulled a bunch of the bands off of uh, the Ozfest tour. And yeah, my wife and I went. We got we were guests of Ted, and we got we sat on the side. It's old hockey arena to where the Adirondack Red Wings used to skate. And uh, we were sitting on the side. We just watched Lombardo play the drums that whole set. It was memorable, though, because it was, uh, but they pulled a lot of bands off. Uh, you know, had a bigger budget, probably bigger building. He pulled a lot of bands off. Hatebreed was there, but it was like in flames. And mm -hmm. I forget who else, a bunch of bands that were on the Ozfest were there. And then the next day, he threw a bunch of hardcore bands and Deicide were there, but Deicide didn't show up. I remember that whole thing. And uh, you also said you saw Slayer on Clash of Titans tour. Is that what you said, Tony? Yeah. yeah. And uh, Al had a, and then Alice in Chains, we had an in store in Middletown at Rock Fantasy that night. Was Alice in Chains on the tour there too? Yeah, they were the opening yep. band. Yep. How yeah. did they how did they go over? Do you remember? Um I don't remember them getting booed or anything. They may have. I mean, I, I yeah. think we got there when they were playing when we went in. Uh, yeah. I, I think it was supposed to be Death Angel on the tour originally, and they pulled out because they had been in a van accident or something. And oh, wow. Out. Yeah, they were. Yep. Anyhow, a little, little bit of chatting about Slayer concerts. It's a Slayer episode, so. Yeah. So. All right. I so. love hearing Tony Dio talk because he sounds like fucking dime bag to me. So it's just so cool. <laughs> <laughs> you said you worked for Slayer and Kerry was cool, right? Like Kerry's a fucking cool dude, right? Yeah. Yeah. I met him a couple times, man. He was totally nice. He gets this fucking rap that he's a piece of shit, but he's actually a decent fucking guy. I was probably from one of the shows, one of the shows, um, the, um, one of the guys on in the crew had uh, wanted to film. The, there was all these fans waiting around the bus, waiting to meet Slayer after the show. And uh, they started getting fans to do the craziest thing, to go upstairs to the dressing rooms and meet Slayer. So this one guy, like, ate a whole squirt ball of mayonnaise and one guy <laughs> ate a thing of peanut butter, like a jar of peanut butter and stuff. And I was giving them water and stuff, you know. And... Uh, <laughs> And then to top it off, Slayer just came out and met everybody anyway afterwards. <laughs> so we all that shit. Yeah. That's great. That's awesome. Speaking of that Ozfest tour, that was the same Ozfest, I believe that uh that's when I was in I saw that tour three times. I saw it in Jones Beach, the Ozfest they were on that year. I saw it at PNC in Holmesville, and I also saw it in Camden. And we were talking about where they didn't play Slayer. Well, that was a whole different story because my friend was working security there with someone and he came up to me and he's like, I've told this story before. He goes, you should leave now. I'm like, what do you mean leave now? The second stage, you know, the main stage is just opening up. He goes, well, Ozzy's sick. He's not Black Sabbath isn't going to perform. There's definitely going to be like a riot or something. I'm like, well, I got front row pit seats for Slyre and Timmy Borgia and Judas Priest. I'm not leaving anywhere. And then a little while later, it was announced that Black Sabbath would be performing with Rob Halford on vocals. That is so cool. You saw yeah, that. So I was there that yes. night for that. Yep, yep. So for anyhow, sure. a little more Slyre talk. Count Ralph is what's up other there, brother? Guess it's Churcher and Tony, you were done, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so, you know, I, I made my list in like 10 minutes really quick, and uh, I'm going to shoot through them really fast because I started thinking of all these different flyer stories. I thought we were just kind of focusing on, on our set list, but uh, everybody's got good flyer stories. But, yeah, mine is uh, the opposite of James's where it was like South to Heaven and Up was his favorite. Like, to me, I like all the Slayer albums, but to me, nothing comes close to the first three. And since it's a dream set list, I, I did something recently for Judas Priest that was like, this. that was 50 years of Judas Priest. So I take I took one song from each album. But this, I'm keeping it. I got um, Rain and Blood. I did put South to Heaven on it. That's the one song that comes out of that. And I, I had to cross some of them off because um, Steve said at first 22 songs, and then today I see it got switched to 18 songs. So I crossed you, off. Like, yeah, well, you know, you can give the 22. Uh, uh, just, we, Nobody we, cares, we, so I'm throwing them back in. Throw them in. Chris Allo is no complaining. <laughs> Evil has no boundaries. Necrophiliac, post mortem, piece by piece, hardening of the arteries, Jesus saves. Praise of Death, Die by the Sword, At Dawn They Sleep, Crypts of Eternity, Black Magic, Altar of Sacrifice, Kill Again, Fight Until Death, Criminally Insane, Hell Awaits, Angel of Death, and Antichrist. And the last three songs for the encore would be Haunted the Chapel, Captor of Sin, and my all-time favorite, Chemical Warfare. And now, um, so uh, I heard Ed mention uh, the Felt Forum show. And for a crazy show, it's, I got a bootleg DVD of it. But on nice. the back, it says, uh, contains rare riot and security fight footage from the Felt Forum. Wow. Stated to be one of the craziest <laughs> shows by Slayer themselves. So at this show, it, Danzig opening, and Danzig didn't even have an album out yet. And we were, like, big into Misfits and stuff. So they played a bunch of Misfits and Sam Haynes songs and a couple of the Danzig albums that no one heard. And there was good pits for them. But then when Slayer came on, nobody would stop pushing up in front of the stage and they were pushing against the monitors it took like an hour for the security to line across the stage they had cops on the stage pushing everybody back they just begging people to take two steps back nobody wanted to lose their spot right up front it was nuts and uh so as soon as it starts there's people just stage diving non-stop and we were like just back and me and my friend said oh let's get up there and stage dive with everybody this is insane people were getting on one side of the stage running all the way across the stage and diving but we got up there and we were like uh, six rows, five or six rows back, and people were just diving on your head nonstop. Wow. So you couldn't like even get to the stage, and it wasn't fun just getting jumped and kicked in the head every two seconds. Yeah. So we headed back towards the seats, and uh, as we were going back to the seats, all of a sudden people started cutting up the seats and were throwing them like frisbees, the big cushion wow. in the seat. And when you watch the video, like I mean, Slayer has to stop a few times, and Tom is like begging people to stop throwing shit, and no one stops. They just cut up the seats throwing him like frisbees he, he begs him to put the lights on for the rest of the set because he didn't want to he wanted to see what's going to hit him and mm -hmm. uh it was, it was cool when i went back to the seats and i had to get in on the cutting up the seats too because everybody uh -uh. Was doing it for me. <laughs> and sitting right next to me was uh the guitar player from Carl pete steel and uh oh. I remember these guys are just sitting back like just like watching it all like kind of shaking their head but like, they, they seem to be enjoying it like everybody else mm -hmm. that was the craziest show i ever went to but uh my first time going to Lemoore's was Testament, opening up for Slayer on the Rain and Blood tour. Yeah, I was so in old in Brooklyn. And then uh, my first time ever at the Chance was Slayer again on the Rain and Blood tour where Tony from Whiplash was playing drums because Dave Lombardo had just quit the That's band. That's right. I was at that show, yeah. Up. Hades, the band Hades from New Jersey opened up and we were, because we were under 18, they made us uh, go up on the balcony. But that was amazing. I watched that show from the balcony and I'll tell you, like when I pick my set list, I think of those three shows and nothing would top that. Those songs that they were playing, the energy that they put off and uh, the crowd going just insane back then. It was it, some of the greatest shows I've ever seen in my life. And uh, yeah, that that's it. I, I did picture that. Now, I wasn't at that Felt Forum show, but I was at the Repentless Tour with Behemoth and the Lamb of God. That was down in what? They don't call it the yeah, Felt Forum. The Felt they were banned from the Felt Forum, and they weren't supposed to ever play the Garden again no. after that show. And then they played that show with Behemoth at the Felt Forum, and no. then they they did their final New York City show that I also went to at at, at the, the at, at the Garden, garden itself, yeah. Where they were supposed to be banned from there and never play there, but they end up doing their final sold out show there. That was amazing, and I I seen them twice on their their final leg, and that was the last thing I wanted to say. It's like you said in the beginning about. Mm. 
you know, people are mad that they're coming back. It's just the way they did it. Like, this is one of those bootleg shirts in the park lot, and it says the final campaign on the bottom. Yeah. And they did four legs, four legs they came around and around and around different acts opening up. And yeah. they did it four times, sucking every last penny, saying, This is the last time we're playing here. Last time. <laughs> they just said, You know what? We're going to do it. It might be our last time. Yeah, we're going to take a break for a while. Yeah, the way they do it, like Molly Crew did it the worst, signing a contract saying oh, Molly Crew cool. got their heads cut off by Alice Cooper. Yeah, that was that was the real <laughs> <dis -tool. laughs> you know, bands like um, uh, you know, some bands say, you know, we're, we're not gonna tour as much, we're gonna play certain shows here and there, but don't sucker everybody in. Like some yeah. people flew out to California for those final oh, two yeah. shows. People coming from yeah. different yeah. countries. Yeah. I know people that did that for Motley Crew too, like Keith Santano did it, flew out there and yeah, hey, Chris Allo, Chris Allo did it for Slayer. He went oh, he sure there. did. Yeah, I, I wish he could have been on with us tonight. You, you spend all that money to go out and see him that one last, very final show, and then they they come back again. It's kind of cheapens it all. But I don't blame them for coming back. They should have just never said they were done. You know, but yeah. Well, yeah. they all they all seem to do this. Alice yeah, money, doesn't... Money, runs out, money, money runs out. At least they waited five years. Molly Crew, how long did they wait? <laughs> Leonard Skinner. <laughs> Did farewell to the street survivors, and then during the pandemic, all of a sudden, they changed the name of the tour and they're back. And now Gary's gone, and they, you know, and it's uh, and they're playing Bethel Woods this summer. Or I got I got the T-shirt from Bethel and uh, PNC that says like final ever at, P at both. And I met yeah, I got the old at PNC. ones like that. Um, yeah. Deep Purple, Deep Purple said that years ago. Scorpions, you went to the final. Oh, I was at the final Scorpion store. I saw Claws, and Claws was. I said, "Hey, Claws, I was at the Pocono Dance Jam in nineteen whatever seventy nine or whatever, and you were with that Ted Nugent." And that's night. he goes, "He goes, that was our first tour of the U.S. Now you're at our last." And of course, <laughs> I, I don't. I haven't got to see Claws. You know, but Claws. You know, we. Claus knew we missed him, and he came back, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now he's got Mickey D on drums, and I did see the Scorpions at the Garden with Megadeth, and, man, Mickey D on the drums with the Scorps was pretty nasty. That's yeah. pretty good. Yeah, yeah. So I saw Slayer. First time I saw Slayer was in the big first big four show of the of them all. It was in Poland. Oh. That was that was quite a experience. I think there was like 100,000 people at that concert. Wow. It started off with a with a Polish uh, core band called Frontside, and then of course Behemoth played since it was was Poland, mm. and then there was the big four afterwards. Wow! But I had Golden Circle. I was really happy to have Golden Circle because there was a lot of people. There was a whole like an airfield in in Warsaw, Poland. They had mm -hmm. wow. Yeah, it was kind of cool to be part of that history. Excellent. All right, Mr. We're going to go to Mr. Steve Levin and over to Tracy, and we'll find us up with Christian, who popped in here uh, yeah. while we were starting. He said he'd be a few minutes late. Good to see him tonight. Steve Levin, what do you got to say, my friend? So, uh, you know, I have a long uh, history with Slayer, for certain. Um, I still remember my buddy Gary D, who pops into these conversations quite a bit, yeah. saying uh, there's this band Slayer out of California. You see this album pick it up i remember going to record world the week that show no mercy came out and seeing it there and of course i bought it you know side six and side six six you know it was for me and uh you know they had all the satanic stuff going on which is right up my alley so you know uh i've loved them ever since that day and uh the first time i saw slayer was 1984 halloween night the rio theater that was the first time they ever played the east coast wow. uh that was the overkill warming up for them and I still remember sitting in the audience. We were hanging out with the guys from Blessed Death, and we didn't know they were the guys from Blessed Death at the time. But that's kind of the way it was back then because people weren't like, oh, I'm in this band for, you know. It was just like you would just be hanging out with people talking. Then you find out like, oh, shit, this guy plays in a band. That's wild. So I still remember talking to the guys because Chemical Warfare had just dropped. And we were like, my God, did you hear that double bass? Because there was literally nothing like that at that time when that came out. That was just insane. So, um. You know, my set list is uh, pretty similar to what Denny was saying. And, um, you know, so I start off with Hell Awaits. Evil Has No Boundaries. Um, nobody Said The Final Command, which is one of their fastest songs. And uh, I, they have to play The Final Command or I'd be pissed off. Come on, this is my dream set. So, you know, Final Command, 100%. Uh, Praise of Death, probably my favorite Slayer song. It has 
uh, I, I shouldn't say my favorite Slayer song, but one of my favorites, my favorite on Hell Awaits because they have uh, the leads, the way that uh, Jeff and Carrie switch off the leads. It's just so sick. I, I love when two guitarists get together and they trade off leads and they kind of go seamlessly together and trade them back and forth between the rhythm. So uh, Praise of Death, uh, Necrophobic, uh, Antichrist, Mandatory Suicide, uh, Capra Sin, and then my favorite Slayer song for sure, Haunting the Chapel. Uh, when Ed said that, I was like, yeah, 100%. I, I love that. That song's so wild. The way he sings the cadence of that, it's just, it's crazy. I still remember when it came out, it took us like, it took me at least like a week to actually figure out how to sing the song. with having a week because the way he sang it. Uh, War Ensemble, which was my only song from Seasons of the Abyss. Uh, I'm keeping it pretty old school. I'm a selfish fuck and I'm doing this pretty much for me since this was the dream list. You know, James was like, you know, I'm going to have something from every song. I'm going to be the asshole that's like, no, this is for me. So uh, uh, War Ensemble, I said uh, Black Magic. Uh, payback, which I was actually surprised to hear a couple people mention that. Um, I happen to love God Hates Us All. When that mm -hmm. album came out, that was to me a, re a return to form for Slayer. Tom Array is pissed off. That's one of his best vocal performances. He's screaming at you. I love the song Disciple. Um, if it weren't for so many other songs that I love, I would have actually included more songs off of God Hates Us All, but that is my favorite. So, Payback. Uh, at Dawn They Sleep, another one of my favorite songs, an epic song. Uh, Necrophiliac, South of Heaven, Spill the Blood, which is one of the slower ones. That's one of the, South of Heaven was not, it was kind of funny going back and listening to the albums because I realized, like, I really do like South of Heaven, even though if you ask me, I'd probably be like, eh, South of Heaven, you know, it's kind of so-so. But I actually do really like it. I listened to it a lot when it came out, and a lot of the songs sounded really good to me. Um, Aggressive Perfector, the first song off Metal Massacre. Uh, you know, I think somebody else said that. I think Ed mm -hmm. threw that that list. Uh, <laughs> Fight till death. You gotta have that song in there. That's such an epic song. Uh, Enter to the realm of Satan. Come on, you gotta have all <laughs> other one of my fucking favorite. The song is just so great. And uh, turning five toes to two. I mean, that's the shit dreams are made of, right? Mm -hmm. uh, then die by the sword, angel of death. And then I'm gonna close this with mine and Denny's, another one of my very favorite songs, Hardening the Arteries. I was lucky enough to see Slayer one time, and I probably saw them over 20 times before, like by the time Rain and Blood had come out, I saw them around 20 times. Because they actually used to play quite often. And we would try to catch them at least once or twice every time they would. So uh, one time I saw them, and they opened with Hell Awaits and ended with Hardening the Arteries with the outro. And that was just insane, because how do you get that? slammy part at the beginning and the end that was just you know too much and then my two encores would be chemical warfare and then of course you have to have raining blood and uh you know like i said slayer is one of my favorite bands at one point there was no band in the world that could touch them live they were just yeah. you know no one was faster uh aside from seeing them the first time they played the east coast i was lucky enough to see the ultimate revenge tour which was crazy that's when you really started to see them blowing up a little bit more. By the time Rain and Blood dropped, it became a whole different audience. There was a lot of people that weren't really into that music that all of a sudden were into that music, yeah. and it got a little bit crazier. Uh, another one of the favorite, uh, my favorite Slayer concerts was, uh, and I'm surprised Ralph didn't mention it, but for his bachelor party, <laughs> we all took a van down. We took two vans down to the Roseland Ballroom, which we had a friend that worked there, and we all gave him like 20 bucks, and he stuck us in the back. We're mm -hmm. hanging out in the back. It was very cool because like uh, Paris from the Chrome Mags was hanging out back <laughs> there, and just it was pretty wild. So there was like 20 of us hanging backstage, and uh, when Slayer played, I was on the balcony overlooking Dave Lombardo mm -hmm. and Jeff Hanneman, and that was just, you know, that was crazy because at that point Lombardo would come back to the band and I still remember there was somebody from MTV that was there I can't recall who it was it was one of the ladies that used to do stuff and everybody was fawning over her and I was standing right against the rail of the balcony and she came over and she looked at me and I think she thought I was gonna let her stand in front of me and I was like no fucking way man. <laughs> stand behind me but uh that was a really cool show because uh I was always like a little bit timid believe it or not but I was a little bit timid to talk to Carrie <laughs> And, uh, it's funny because we actually share the same birthday, June 3rd. He was born a year before me, and I found that out uh, just a few years ago. But I was always a little bit timid to talk to him. And at Ralph's bachelor party, it was the Agermeister tour. So he was signing stuff, and uh, I waited online to get a poster signed, and it's actually hanging on my wall still. And um, 
I said to him, I said, Carrie, I said, you've been a big influence on me playing wise and I love your music. And I said, I'm old like you and I've been listening to you since day one. And he actually got up from behind the table and stood up and shook my hand. And I was just like, wow. And uh, somebody else said that like, you know, Carrie gets a bad rap. And I think that maybe he's just a shy guy. Maybe he just doesn't want to talk to people. I don't know. But whenever I talk to him, he's a great dude. So, you know, it just goes to show. But yeah, Slayer! Yo, yo, that, <laughs> yeah. Night, that night though, um, when we were meet, we got to meet Kerry King. I had a little fun saver, and we kind of met him at different times. Like they were sitting down, him and Paul Booth were sitting down, the tattoo mm-hmm. artists, and they were just signing the Jaeger posters. That's and stuff. right. I forgot about yeah. Paul Booth. I actually yeah. that night I got a picture with Kerry. I'm like, yeah, this is awesome. A, my bachelor party, I'm hanging out with Kerry King. Then I got a picture <laughs> with Ed Dog. I got a picture with Ed Dog and Kerry. And then I was moshing around like a fucking idiot the rest of the night, and somebody smashed into me, and my my front saver hit the ground, smashed into a million pieces. Wow. My friend Ed was calling me the next day. My friend Ed was like, "Yo, you're gonna get those that film developed today, right?" And I was like, "Dude, the camera got smashed." He's uh, like, "Yeah, really though, really. When are you gonna do it? I can't wait. Make sure you get doubles." So I'm like, Dude, "I fucking, I don't even know. It smashed into a million pieces." But uh, wow, that's crazy, yeah. dude. I never knew that. that. Sort of- Night, Another bro. quick thing, though, Steve. Though you said that uh, Slayer played the first time with uh, opening for, for Venom. That was your first time seeing them. No, no. Uh, the first time I saw them was actually it was yeah. Halloween night, nineteen eighty four, and Overcoat oh, warmed up them. Okay, and then I was just trying to figure out because you said that they played. You seen them twenty times before Rain and Blood, so that would have been like in in two years they played the New York area twenty times. Uh, actually, I wouldn't say before Rain and Blood. I would say by the time Rain and Blood, the tour had come. But yeah, dude, they played a ton of times. They must have played at least six or seven times for the Hell of Waits tour uh, right in this immediate area. And of course, you know the way it was that they would play like Trenton and they would play like New York City like two nights. They would always play Lemoore's two nights and they would yep. play Trenton like City Gardens and places like that. So it was easy to catch them a couple nights on each tour, you know? Mm. I just, Lemon. I, I just Lemon. think on the show No Mercy, it didn't seem like they toured that much, you know, because they didn't have much money behind them. It On Hell of Waste, I know, in, in Haunting the Chapel and Live Undead, they toured a lot. Yeah, it's funny. So. Yeah, the first time they ever toured was when Chemical Warfare had just come out. That yeah. was the first time they came to the East Coast. And by real theater, right? Yeah, yep. I actually have the shirts. Lemon. I took Lemon. that shirts up, but I should have broke it out. It's in my closet somewhere. Yeah. Well, Lemon, yeah you, did they, they play me. Ice Titan anytime you saw them? I'm sorry? Did they play song Ice Titan? That was the demo. I, oh, no, I no, no, not that shows. <laughs> they already stopped doing them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, Count Rapus, when what year was this uh, show you're talking about? Just for our viewers, uh, you, what? How long ago was it when you're uh, when you had your bachelor party? Oh, that was uh, 2003. It was Hatebreed, Arch Enemy, and Arch Slayer. Enemy. Mm-hmm. And we we, did, uh, we took two vans down. We got pulled over on the way down. Wow. <laughs> of course you did. Over. We had a keg in the van. Oh, the cop, we had the cops wrong. Like, that was terrible, dude. I thought we were going to jail, bro. <laughs> Who was the you said uh, you said it was who was who, who, going to jail? Who was the opening act again, Ralph? It was Hate Hate Breed opened, mm. then uh, Arch Enemy, Arch Enemy, and then Flyer, yeah. and then like a couple weeks later on Halloween, I got married in Transylvania. Yeah, so that's where that's where the Count Ralphie comes from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I was at that show and uh, was... and I saw them at the Civic Center that night. Uh, that that tour too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was at the Civic Center for that also, I believe. Yep, yep. All righty. So, Steve, you're done? Yes. Thanks, Steve. Uh, we're going to head over to Tracy from WXAX Radio. It's amazing how we all didn't meet sooner, just at another Slayer show. Yeah. 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 Well, we probably- so, I mean, I was at the Civic Center. I was at the Chance. We, we you know, it, it's just amazing. And we the one person that alcohol, I did. You know? What? We probably did thinking. meet, but alcohol and stuff gets in the way, you know. So. <laughs> we were probably, Nobody, I it's so funny it. because I can't place anybody. I mean, not that I was, I was like searching out, but searching out people or anything like that. And I didn't, of course, I wasn't in the front row for any of those shows. It was friggin' brutal down there, but um, I was, I was on the sidelines, but um. But one person here I did meet the first time I ever met Ralph was at the first leg of the Slayer tour up in Albany. 
and that was my introduction to the Middletown crew. So this is that that's that's a big moment for me, especially mm-hmm. in my second phase of life here. Um, what year? Nine, what year was this? What show was that in Albany? Uh, uh, the, the the first layer, the first leg of the Slayer tour. Yeah, it was Napalm Death, Testament, Anthrax, and Slayer. Yeah. Oh, and Danny, oh, oh, okay. The first that was the uh, that was the second leg of the final tour. Yeah. Yep, yep. See, Danny, show, Danny and I ended up going together. Yeah, her and Danny Figueroa went up there, and that show I bring Ray up. Me and my wife drove Ray up there, mm-hmm. and I think she met Ray that night. And now they've been. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. That I, uh, I met him in a second. That type thing, but yeah, mm-hmm. I actually ended up hanging out with Ralph and Candy more. Um, yeah, but that that was definitely the start of it all. The start of all this for me because and it wasn't even I that long ago. No, no, I I didn't hang out with the Middletown crew. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we were the Hudson Valley crew. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Over here at the chance, you know? Yeah. Um but my my list went is is a little eclectic. I went a little bit different. Um I wanted to hear songs that I hadn't seen live, so I threw in a few of them. So I've got South of Heaven, Bloodline. Black Magic, Skeletons of Society, Supremist, Raining Blood, Cult, because I love that song, Cult. Mm -hmm. Um, In the middle, I was hoping they could do like a montage of uh, covers and do Anagata DeVita. Wow. Mm -hmm. Nice. uh, Yeah, with Gemini. And I'm going to be your God. And then I got Jesus Wept, War Ensemble, Scrum. I didn't hear anybody say Scrum. No. Um, Behind the Crooked Cross, Sex Murder Art, Spirit in Black, Dead Skin Mask, Spill the Blood. And we're going to end this with Seasons of the Abyss and Angel of Death. Nice. Cool. Yeah. Hell yeah. So I picked a few you guys didn't. I, but I yeah. haven't seen their songs <laughs> and their favorites of mine. I never seen them play them live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very nice. Actually, you and Ray were on went to a Slayer show on that final tour somewhere else too. But maybe it was that one because you brought me back a shirt that I did not pick up. I said, "Hey, I kind of want that shirt," and Ray picked it up for me. Yep, yep, yep. Um, we seen every leg of the tour. I think that yeah, was we maybe F- in Connecticut or somewhere. Yep, yep. Xfinity sent. Nope. See what? Nope. And, yep. The Slayer yep, wraps Xfinity. up that tour and all hell breaks loose in our lives. <laughs> I'm telling you. Lockdowns and whatever else. But anyhow. Hey, let's wrap this up tonight. Our final uh, guest is Christian. I'm not, I'm going to, I'm going to get his name right one of these days. <laughs> uh, say your last you know, name I, for me. If I got in here early enough, I might have spelled it out like you do in the dictionary. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I told him to do that. But I, I was late getting on, so I didn't have time to do that. Uh yeah, so um when I was thinking about um this assignment, um, so I stuck with what you originally posted, Steve, the 20 songs plus the two encores. That's fine. Um, but one of the things that you know, you listen to like Show No Mercy and Tom Array just you know, he's shrieking on almost like every song, or you know, there's shrieks here and there, which you don't you don't hear him doing that like later on and you never hear it live. So in my scenario, we got to do something to get Tom where he can like hit those high notes again, whether he has to have surgery or huh. going with Tony story, keep those kidney stones in whatever we got to do. So he can do the shrieks when he needs to on some of those older songs. Um, the set list I picked is mostly the first five albums with a couple um, later songs um, kind of thrown in there. Um, I think every song I got on here, pretty much everyone has picked in their set list already, but that's all good. Um, so opening is going to be Hell Awaits. Um, it seems like a lot of other people pick that one as well. I just think it's a perfect, like, opening type of song. Then after Hell Awaits, we go into Antichrist. After that, we go to Blood Red, also Seasons in the Abyss. Then we go to Captor of Sin. And after that, we go to uh, Fictional Reality from Divine Intervention. And after that, we got War Ensemble. And then from there, I think a song I don't think anyone has picked yet, and that would be Silent Scream off mm-hmm. of the Heaven. 
Yeah. From there, we got Die by the Sword. And at dawn, they sleep. They got Black Magic and then Tormentor. And one of the reasons I want to hear the shriek is I want to hear that shriek like at the end of Tormentor. (laughs) Great to hear that live. Uh, And after Tormentor, we're going to go to Disciple of God Hates Us All. I think it's a killer song. And I think Stevie was saying um, it it kind of felt like a comeback in a way because I I remember Diabolos and Musica. I didn't really jump off the train, but I didn't like that as much. But then Mm -hmm. hearing that one, it kind of like, all right, yeah. This player still got it. Um, then after Disciple, we're going to go to Ghosts of War off the of South of Heaven. Uh, from there, we go to Skeletons of Society. I got South of Heaven. I'm going to do Necrophobic, a nice fast one. And then right after that, we're going to go to Necrophiliac. <laughs> oh. I figured, you know, just that one-two punch. <laughs> um, and then from there, we got uh, Season of the Abyss. And then the... Um, before we get to the encores, it'll be raining blood. And then for the encores, we got chemical warfare and angel of death. That's my service. Cool, cool. Yeah. So viewers out there, we want you to make your list and put them in the comments and uh take a minute to hit the like button, hit subscribe, share this video around to your friends if you could. But uh we had some extracurricular activities, but we're going to wrap up the Slayer portion. James was in town the other day, and we hung out. We did the rock. Talking about thrash metal, so we're talking thrash still. We had the rock fantasy thrash bash. was headlined. That was such a good show. By Damage Incorporated uh, from Long Island. Not to be confused with the other Damage Incorporated. <laughs> it's actually playing oh, in Sugar, Sugar Loaf this week, which is South uh, South Southern California metallic tribute but we had uh it was a packed house a lot of great energy opened up with scarlet king from sussex county and we <laughs> went then we went into crucial pain and then uh our brothers fire haze were on again and boy fire haze just seemed to be up in their game every time i see them they've been doing a good job and then we had the metallic tribute but crucial pain you guys put on another killer set thank you very much and also thank you for the hookup with the new Midnight record oh, yeah, from Mark yeah. Fantasy. Yeah. Have you seen the Sangria oh, wow. colored vinyl? I haven't opened it yet, no. Ooh. Nice. <clears throat> cool. Killer record, man. It's it's one of those, you know, everybody's saying rain and blood goes by like a fucking like that, that and you want to hear it again and again. Yeah. Same thing, man. This album's only fucking like 24 minutes long. And you just want to keep flipping the sides over again. I've listened to this record like seven times since mm-hmm. I've been home from the show. It's fucking amazing. Cool. But yeah, that was a killer show, man. I want to come back. Fucking Quinn's Pins rules. Oh, well, we're going to have you back. We just got to figure Please. it out for sure. Please. Mr. Levin, you had some extracurricular activities last week. You went down to Philadelphia. This is uh, for pro wrestling week. It was a huge week. WrestleMania was in Philly. Everybody was in Philly, New Japan, the Impact, ECW reunions, uh, you name it. They were all in Philadelphia. And you went and saw, was it the final ever gig for Eat the Turnbuckle? Yeah, that's it. They're they're done. That'll never be done again. So, uh, you know, it was great seeing it. It was great seeing all the guys again. It was definitely sad for us now thinking about it, you know, looking back and reflecting. But uh Wow, what a send-off it was. I mean, it was everything you would expect. Uh, tons of blood, barbed wire. They had uh, 10 wrestlers going right through the audience, like deathmatch. Uh, uh, <laughs> Necro Butcher threw a chair that actually bounced right off of Kelly's head. Oh, and, nice. <laughs> I mean, she didn't even flinch, so she's a tough oh, she's still walking. She's yeah. walking. It's great. You can actually see a video of it on Instagram. Uh, somebody posted a video. Wow. It's too much, but... Uh, it was great seeing the guys again. And um, if you know, if uh, you want to go on face, anybody wants to go on Facebook, I posted pictures, just le- look for eat the turnbuckle tags. And uh, mm-hmm. yeah, it was sick. And uh, they really brought in some uh, classic groups. You had ringworm and uh, anti scene. Those guys are really nice guys. Okay. Really cool. And um, uh, did I say ringworm? Maybe. Yeah, I, you did. I, yeah. I, did yeah. I say ringworm? I'm sorry. Oh, and Fang. Fang played and uh, a local band ground, which is a really good uh, grind core band. So uh just a great night overall. And, uh, you know, we've become 
closer to them. They're like family to us now. So, uh, mm-hmm. like I said, it was sad, but uh, hopefully uh, some of the guys will still continue on playing music. I know Schlack mm-hmm. is hopefully going to do some more Call the Paramedic stuff. And uh, they do the band The Crypt or two, which is very uh, similar along the same lines. And, uh, you know, like I said, it, it they could not it could not have been more spectacular than it was. Everything was just absolutely perfect about it. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know a player from uh, Anti Scene comes into my store a lot. Oh, he used man. to have a record store out here in Danbury called Trash American Style. Uh, Malcolm Tent, he's a good dude. He also plays bass in I, I put Malcolm. Pro Fanatica. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Malcolm, I bought a Kiss pinball machine from Malcolm once. He had a really? store in Danbury, yes. Long yeah. time ago, yeah. Yeah, Trash American Style. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. I was in Philadelphia myself all day on uh, on Friday. It was for Battleground Wrestling, which my friend actually has, runs. And then at night we had the return of the Extreme too. And was they actually put the uh, Dudley Boys into the Hall of Fame at ECW Arena, and it was a good night for wrestling and ECW. I got to meet some people. I used to work at EC, work, 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 work with the ECW, a little bit of selling shirts and whatnot back in the day. So really? Tommy, Tommy Dreamer was there and uh, got to see Francine and Shane Douglas and hung out with Blue Meanie. And Meanie was always was kind of was thankful that I came down. He said, good to see some old faces. And it was completely packed. I got to hang out with Missy Hyatt. I saw... Uh, Jasmine St. Clair is helping them out a little bit too. So it was a night of wrestling. We're way off topic, but we're just kind of going around. Anybody else see a show last week before we wrap it up? Uh, actually, I went to Deceased Exhorter. And That's Bob, right. The book that was a great. Show. I, that was a, that was a really great show. Exhorter. Yeah. Just, man. I was really. We were pissed. We really wanted to go see Deceased and always just even hang out with King. We always support them, but of course we're having car trouble, so. That uh, uh, we had to rent a car for eat the turnbuckle, but oh know, shit, uh, you know. So yeah, yeah. here, let me see yeah. if I can show you. Let me see if I can line it up. Here's uh, let me see if I can get up there. That's the guitar, one of the guitars from the show hanging on our wall now. Oh wow! Oh, uh, cool. Mashed up. <laughs> <laughs> and here's our eat the turnbuckle door hanging on our wall <laughs> from down the asylum. Oh yeah, I was there that night. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's we, when Bald Mahoney was there, right? Yeah, yeah, we uh, Ball signed it. Yeah, yeah. That was actually on the wall for a long time, and then when they closed Sound Asylum down, I was friends with the owner, so uh, mm-hmm. I be- kind of begged them for it, but I don't think it took all that. They gave it to me anyway, so now it hangs proudly on our wall. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Hey, if you're in the Middletown area next week, it's record store day. So please come out and buy some stuff because I need the money. Me too. <laughs> and uh, and uh, James has a record store too. What record, record store do you work at, James? Disc and Dat in Bethel, Connecticut. So, so please come out to we, uh, Disc and Dat as well. We were both talking shop a little bit before we started recording. And we were both, I mean, I'm a little nervous going into this one because it's been with the economy the way it is and everything else and we got we a lot, be all right. lot of records coming <laughs> next week so we got records and then we've got a we've got music at quinn's next week so if you want to come out we have grateful ears on friday night we have psycho circus on saturday we have a pinball tournament now going on at the store that day along with the record store day 10 percent off it's 420 for the smoke shop too so uh Thank hey you. We'll see you next week on the Rock Fancy Files. Danny Barth is coming up with an idea for next week. Danny, feel better. I heard you're, he's under the weather. He's missing it tonight. We almost had Chris Allo on. We're going to keep trying, but he's under the weather tonight, too. We will I was see, looking forward to seeing him. <laughs> yeah, we will see you next week on the Rock Fancy Files. Bang. <laughs>